This is Flappy Boy Chapter 12, adding a user interface. The user interface that we're going to build for Flappy is pretty simple. We're going to begin with displaying the word score and the integer value of the current score, and we'll put it in the upper left-hand corner. We actually already have all the functionality created in Flowgraph to calculate the score and pass it to a display message node. All we're going to do is use Flash to create the vector art, create a function inside it to display the dynamic text, create an XML script to connect the Flash object to Flowgraph, and finally add a couple of Flowgraph nodes. So you can use ScaleForm or you can use Flash version 6 for this. I'm going to be showing you Flash version 6. And the first thing we want to do is create a new object. And I'm going to create this full size, 1920 by 1080. Frame rate should be 30 frames per second. Make sure you're working in pixels as your units here. And we're going to be working with ActionScript version 2, which is what CryEngine supports. Next thing I want to do is go to the Publish settings under the File menu and set these up. We don't need HTML. CryEngine doesn't make use of it. What we're concerned with is the SWF file. Super important that you make your target Flash Player 10 and your script version ActionScript 2. It's also going to be important where the final file goes, not the SWF, because we're going to use an optimized version of this that one of our CryEngine tools creates. But for organizational purposes, this is what I suggest that you do. If you go back to your launcher and reveal your project folder, then go into Game SDK, Libs, which means libraries, of course, UI, and then create a folder called Flash Assets. And that's where we're going to keep our SWF files, even though we don't use them directly. So what you can do is right-click on this guy here, copy this entire address as text, and then paste it into Flash. So that's going to be my folder. And the file name I'm going to use for this particular thing is UI Flappy Score. You can call this anything you like. That's it for our publish settings. We'll come back later and actually use the publish button once we're finished with it. What we want to do here is hold down the space bar to get to the hand tool so I can see the upper left hand corner. Switch to the text tool right here. And I'm going to create a text box that's big enough to include the word score, a colon, and let's say a, a three digit number, something like this. Switch back to my arrow tool. I don't want to cram it all the way in the upper left hand corner. I can dynamically position this in Flowgraph later, but I know approximately that I want it in the upper left hand corner of a full HD screen. Whatever color your environment is, you're going to want to make this contrasting so it stands out. I'm going to make it pretty big, 60 points, and kind of a bold yellow since I mostly have blue sky and pretty much dark pipes behind it. And here are the super important things. We need to make this a dynamic text object, not static text. That way we can change its actual content, which is its text property. I'm also going to give this instance a name and call it txt score. And last but not least, I have to embed any characters from this font inside the actual Flash file. So I click on this embed button. And since I'm using uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and also this particular symbol, I'm going to have to include this, 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 and this. And I'm just going to give this glyph name Arial Bold. If you forget that step, you're not going to see anything. I'm going to save before I forget. I still have this path on the clipboard, so I'm going to paste that in. And you'll notice, if you haven't worked with Flash before, that the extension name for your Flash source files is .fla for Flash. Now we need to create a script down here in our timeline. And by the way, if there's any tools missing here, they're all listed in the window menu. I'm going to rename this text. I'm going to create a new layer by clicking on this button right here. And this is going to be my action script. So I'm just going to name that layer AS. And I'm going to move it to the bottom. And then in the first frame of that action script, I'm actually going to write my script. And for that, I need the actions window right here. So my script is very simple. I'm going to declare a function called update score. I have to tell it what it is, which is a function. And it's going to have one parameter, which is simply a string that I'm going to call score. Inside my curly braces, I want to tell it what to do, which is to modify the properties of this object, which is called txt score. And the property that I want to set is called .text, which is the actual content of it. 
and that's going to come from this parameter that I've declared as part of the function right here. Now, one more thing before we're finished with this, we don't want to actually leave any text in here. We want that to come from CryEngine. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the content of this text object, but actually leave the object there. Again, it's a dynamic object and it's going to get fed from Flowgraph. Okay, we can save and let's go ahead and publish. I could do it directly here, but I'm just going to go through publish settings just to double check that my settings are okay, my path looks good, my file name's okay, and I click on the publish button. And now if I go back to this flash assets folder, you see that I have this UI flappy score.swf file. The next thing that I need to do is create an optimized version of this for use in the engine. And for that, I need to use a utility that comes with your CryEngine installation. So if you find your CryEngine 5.5, in my case, folder, inside that is a tools folder, and inside that is a folder called GFX export. GFX is just an optimized, sort of compressed version of SWF. So to use this, I'm opening these two windows side by side because I need to be able to drag this SWF file, drop it on this thing, and it'll automatically generate the GFX in the same folder. The next step is I need to move this to the UI folder. So I'm simply going to choose Cut, go up one level, and then Paste. GFX files have to live in this Libs UI folder. By the way, if your CryEngine is running right now, you're going to need to close it because all this stuff has to be prepared before you launch CryEngine in order for it to read it. And it's not dynamic. If the engine is already running, it's not going to notice changes in these elements. The next thing we need to do is expose this UI element to Flowgraph. And for that, we need an XML script, and it has to go in this UI elements folder. So create a blank text file, and you're going to save it as UI Flappy Score, for instance, .xml. I'm using Notepad++, and rather than make you watch me type this whole thing, I'm just going to walk through what's going on in here. So UI Elements is the general category that we need. This is the name of the UI element that's going to show up in Flowgraph. And then it seems a bit redundant, but I have to declare an individual UI element again. So you can kind of copy and paste a lot of that. And you need to use this render lockless parameter. Then we need to point it to a specific GFX file. We declare a GFX parameter. We tell it the file name it has to be in quotes. Be very careful if you're using a more fancy text editor like Microsoft Word that wants to replace these regular straight quotes with fancy quotes. Those will not work. Layer equals zero is a super important parameter. So our UI elements can be stacked one on top of one another, and zero is going to be on top. Then the rest of these parameters you can actually set dynamically using Flowgraph. I've gone ahead and put some of them inside my XML script, but I can override these in Flowgraph. So right now these just refer to the alignment of the entire object, its scale, and its mode. The next thing is we want to communicate that this GFX file contains a function. And this has to match exactly the name of the function in your Flash file. So update score was the name of my function. I have to actually write it twice, both as name and func name. And this description is optional right here. And then I'm going to declare a parameter called text. Description is optional, and the type is string. So I'll just warn you now from experience that these XML scripts are unforgiving. All of the syntax has to be exact. You can't forget a brace or a caret or a closing caret or omit a quote. So I've provided this actual code in the course workbook, which you can literally copy and paste into here. So make sure that you save this in this UI elements folder. So in game SDK, game SDK again, libs, UI, UI elements. That is the only place it can go. And you're not going to see a cry asset file until you actually launch the engine, which is going to be our next step. Make sure it has a .xml extension name. Next, I'm going to go back to my launcher and actually launch my game.